Oh wow, this game scared me. Seeing people around me mentally break down and show their emotions. And also, uh... Anyways... I wonder if I can find any other games like this. Hmm, let's see. That looks like a normal game. And then you got a game about the back rooms. Understandable. Wow, that one looks really scary. Furry Hitler! <laughs> Hello everybody, Bell here. Today I wanted to take a look at Steam's psychological horror games. Now I say that with quotation marks because, let me be honest, not everything on Steam's store listed as so are gonna fit the rather loose definition of what a psychological horror game is. But I found some really funny or just plain bad games and thought it would be fun to cover them. With each game I rate it based on how good it is and how much it deserves the psychological horror tag. An example, Eggs for Bart. Now before I get into all the funny and bad games that might not fit the title of psychological horror and laugh at them, I thought that I should maybe show some of the real psychological horror games. First game to look at is Teleform. That title, you would think it would be about someone who was a chronically online troll who got their shit beaten for talking trash. But no, Teleform is a point and click interactive story where you enter an old lady's home and frantically search it before finding why you came there for. You are there to interview wife of Walter well, Martins whose husband took his life with after he watched some fishy tape, which you follow in his footsteps and do as well. After watching said tape, you're forced to repeat everything again, only slightly differently. And this is where it gets kind of messy, but each path leads to a demented hellhole, which ends with you watching a video of Walter talking about the tape. Overall, this game was decent and well put together for a free Steam game. The only real problem was like one spelling mistake, but I'm being a little bit nitpicky, so I'll write it 7.9 out of 10. And as for how well it fits as a psychological horror game, although it doesn't really fit in most parts, there are places where it can be mentally taxing. 6.7 out of 10. In the making of this video, I found a gem of a game called Lily's Well. It begins with you, the main character Lily, hear a voice coming from the well. You have to gather materials to make her rope out of. Yarn, toilet paper, frayed charger, yellow and red vines, will all snap if any of them are used even once. Meanwhile, sheets, papa's belts, bullwhip, tire swing rope, blue vine, bridge chain, extension cord, fishing net, hair, and knitted yarn are all safe ropes to use. There are 10 main endings in which you fall after being cut down. You fall. You fall. You get tossed out of a pipe and hit the rocks below. You get smothered. You get trapped and run away. You get absolutely sucked by vines. And you meet very friendly monsters. Five side endings in which you, guess what, you fall, you get hit by a car, eaten by a wild animal, you drown, and finally you throw out literally everything of use and get eaten by a trash can. One true ending and a wide variety of other things in the game you can do, such as calling unknown numbers and finding easter eggs. And there are ten main endings, each corresponding to the amount of ropes you use which in turn corresponds to a flower that appears after said ending, soon turning it into Lily's Garden. Uh, spoilers for the ending now. In the tenth ending in True Ending, you find out what has truly been going on. Lily's father has been cloning Lily and letting her, her kill herself to try to get to the bottom of the well. In the true ending, Lily calls a number she gathered through experiencing all of the main endings. This number turns out to be Lily number one, who is much older than the Lily that you are now. Lily one and you burn down the house and Lily one takes the clone Lily under her wings and they live happily ever after. <clears throat> this game was well put together in every aspect. The story was truly scary and messed up while still ending up to be wholesome. The gameplay puts the player on edge for every ending, 
and was truly scary for some parts. And the sound design wasn't keeping it back either. Eerie but well-produced music played the whole way through. For that, I must give this game a perfect 10. This game has been my new obsession recently, and it works perfectly as a psychological horror game. And my, may I say that's free. This is what all psychological horror games should be like. Perfect 10 out of 10 for me. Now it's time to talk about the scariest thing on this list. Furries. The game is called Alter Ego. It follows the story of Reese, a rat who has to solve the murder of her fiancé, Winona the Sheep. Yes, they are gay. She looks back on all her past memories, denying to herself that she killed her girlfriend. The game takes a twist when we see what truly happened. Her girlfriend wasn't very healthy with the relationships and would assault her. One time driving them into a conflict which ended with Winona attacking Reese, who defended themselves and stabbed Winona. The game then starts to wear off the illusion that they were a rat and sheep and shows them human. And they part ways, saying it's better if both of them moved on. The story was dark, but it ended up tying up quite nicely. I don't know how much else to say about this game, so I'll rate it an 8.5 out of 10. But that being said, this game doesn't really fit as a psychological horror. Maybe to some people it might be, but on that note, I'll rate it a 4 out of 10. Now before we get into the mislabeled and or atrociously bad games, I must get this out of the way. Yes, there are plenty of good psychological horror games on Steam. There are just as many bad games as good games there. On top of that, this category is flooded with straight up horror games. I won't be covering any of those. Now it's time to cover your favorite game without spending five nights in a building. That's right, it's time to talk about Five Nights at Floppa. Now this game was made by a Russian producer named Freezy Cat and looks like a crypto miner but doesn't run like one. It's just your average FNAF clone, not much to say here. All you gotta do is keep Floppa from eating the dumplings and staying alive. Overall, it's a 5.5 .5 out of 10 game. And as for fitting the psychological horror tag, I would say 6 out of 10. I would say it barely constitutes as a psychological horror game. Now let's do a lightning round of shooters mislabeled as psychological horror games. First up we have Banana Shooter, a free steam game labeled as psychological horror and souls-like. Overall, this is a very fun fast paced shooter that really shouldn't be listed as a psychological horror game, except for the trolls with terrible names hacking and winning every game. Overall, a 7 out of 10 game that do really doesn't deserve the psychological horror tag, so I had to say it's a 3 out of 10 on that front. Next we have Ape Wars. Unlike the last game, this game costs money. But I think it's totally worth it. The janky animations for the apes you play give it a certain charm. I must say that it's a 7.5 out of 10 game that I would also give a 3 out of 10 on the front of it deserving the psychological horror tag. Huh, only two shooter games and this labeled as psychological horror games. Anyways. Next we have the scariest children's game on the market, Pajama Sam 2. Wait, am I reading this wrong? No. Pajama Sam 2, Thunder and Lightning aren't so frightening, are listed as, get this, a psychological horror game. I mean, this is a great game with some really cute characters and a great story, but it really doesn't constitute the psychological horror game tag. Honestly, it's an 8 out of 10 game that do really doesn't deserve to be a psychological horror game. 0 out of 10. Hey Lois! Remember one time, I was in a Pokemon card game ripoff, labeled as Psychological Horror on Steam? Yeah, go, go, yeah, go. Animation Throwdown The Quest for Cards is a corporate pushed out gacha game that is basically a Pokemon's card battling mixed with Dragon Ball Z's fusing. It's certainly not the worst game ever made, but it's pretty terrible and I'd have to give it a 3 out of 10 with a 6 out of 10 on deserving the psychological horror tag. Man, that was worse than that one time I went to school. Eh. Have you ever wanted a game where you can commit arson, terrorism, first, second, and third degree murder, grand theft, larceny, graffiti, assault, assault with a deadly weapon, kidnapping, destruction of public and private property, Truancy, vehicular assault, animal abuse, all while in a school building? Well then bad guys at school is the game for you. This game is very bad graphically, but it looking tacky, 
in addition to the wacky things you can do, gives this game charm and makes it fun. And it has multiplayer too? How fun is that? Committing terrorism, arson, and more, all with a friend. Now I might have a bias towards this game because I was able to get my friend Lucy to play this game with me. Oh, I got, come here Kill. I got a word with you. I got a word with you. What do you need? Oh, come here, come here. I gotta have a, I gotta have a word with you. Did he just hit me? <laughs> oh my god! Okay, time to go back to school. I'm gonna kill a child, hold on. <laughs> you can do that? Yeah, I could just, I just got 15 whole dollars. But you got fifteen dollars for beating up a child? Please. Where, where's the stairs? <laughs> where the fuck did you go? Where the? Why did that happen? Oh my god! Where the I fuck just, were I you? I just put, okay, I blew up the principal with the Oh, firecracker. there's like. Take Granny to the take 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 Granny to the lake. <laughs> oh my god! You picked them up. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, can I do this? <laughs> Maybe I'll be safe up here, and now I can- oh, fuck. <laughs> ah! Where am I going? Wee! I'm Superman! <laughs> <laughs> Doink. Tell me if you see any corpses falling from the sky. I don't see corpses, but I hope you see if you saw a car that might be me. Oh, I saw a car flying through the sky. Do you see this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's all right. Okay, hold on. Can I oh. Car? oh, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. This feels like a fucking Roblox game. It, 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 it does remind me this of that, yeah. Yeah, guys, welcome, welcome, to, uh, welcome back to Welcome to Blocks, Greg. Does it even work? It doesn't even do anything. Oh! <laughs> can you get out? Yes, I can. Yeah, you can. Oh. Yeah. The R. The R. <laughs> Come back here. I'm taking you to the principal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to pull out my lighter. Okay, now I have a lighter. Take this. Oh! Oh! Okay. Oh! <laughs> oh my god, you got a baseball bat. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Come back here. Uh... Oh, now you're dead. Now you're dead. Look at you. Now you're dead. Hold on, just wait till I get to the science room, then you'll be over. Where, Where have you? you gone? I have something to show you. Oh my god, it's Hulk! <laughs> I don't think they have the rights to do this, honestly. I, they certainly <laughs> don't. Come here, come here. I'm, I'm coming. Where, where are walls. you? Oh my gosh, you became a police <laughs> officer. And I know what it does to the NPCs, but I don't know what it does to people. We have to go to the Ark. We have to go to the Ark. We have to go to the Ark. Where's Noah? Ark? Where's Noah? Where's Noah? Where's, Where's Noah? Hey, it's me. Hey, it's it's me. It's That's you. Shark. Hold on, hey. hold on. Uh, Hi, Mr. Shark. Hi, I'm your friend. I can't even interact with. Can I? Just pick them up. I give this game an eight out of ten, and it kind of deserves to be listed as a psychological horror game. Seven out of ten on that front. Politics. We all either hate them, love them, or don't give a fuck. Anyway, I will now introduce Super Bernie World, a Super Mario ripoff where you play as Bernie Sanders and work your way throughout USA and defeating people such as Ted Cruz, Jim Jordan, and eventually getting to the White House and beating the final boss, Donald Trump, who is quite pathetic. The game is overall kind of cool and really weird, but it doesn't deserve a psychological horror rating. Probably overall a 6.5 out of 10 game, and a 3 out of 10 for fitting as a psychological horror game. Don't worry Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden gets a little love too. I'm just gonna be straight up with y'all on this, I don't think I can take this game seriously. I don't fucking know if these people are against Joe Biden, and absolutely slandering him and his speech patterns and seniority, or if they were just down bad for him in a very creepy way. 
This game has drove me absolutely crazy. I mean, I could see the creators being either of those people. Anyways, this game centers around the you, the mo main protagonist, starting a new summer job at, the at a nursing home. Keep in mind that this is a dating sim. There, your boss, a hot fur, uh, <clears throat> a normal furry, tasks you with getting to know your new patients. One of whom includes the former president of the U.S., who is now retired, Joe Biden, who loves his ice cream. Meanwhile, the furry named Jeremy tries to stop Joe Biden from getting ice cream. Jeremy, throughout the whole game, is a total jerk to you and Joe Biden and tries to sabotage, sabotage your relationship with Sleepy Joe himself. And what the fuck is this? Leg hair? Also, this isn't edited. Why is it censored so poorly? With a budget of negative one dollar, I could do better than this. See? I at least use the anime fog trick and not scribble it over with the marker tool. Anyways, once the story progresses, he makes a movement and you and Joe Biden share a kiss. Now either you don't agree with the main character and wish you could keep the relationship afloat, or to your and the main character's rightful shock, you find this uncomfortable and avoid Joe Biden. You confront him about the situation and he feels heartbroken and pushes you away. You then enter a pretty much rigged trivia section about the things you've learned in the game so far, and you either win or lose, it doesn't matter. Then you go back to Joe Biden and say that you felt rushed into it at first, but you're ready to start a relationship now. He pushes you away and states that you're beautiful, but that he wanted somebody younger. <laughs> There's no way I can take this game seriously anymore. As somebody wise once said, it's Jover. It's a 0 out of 10 game, and it fully deserves to be a psychological horror game. 10 out of 10 on that front. Time for the most infamous psychological horror. World War II, survival horror, souls-like, cold war, story-filled game on the Steam store that you mad dogs have either been looking forward to or absolutely dreading. Furry feet. Now since this game has some quite disturbing imagery, I will introduce you to the Imagination Cube. I will not show any feet. If you want to see feet, you have to imagine it yourself, because I'm not showing any. Now this game is just a massive atrocity to humankind. Furry Feet is a puzzle game. Man, we are off to a great start. Where you solve puzzles to see furry feet, although the images are pretty tame, the game feels like it's poorly put a poorly put together formula made to sell content that is straight up disgusting. They have five DLC, one a free add-on, and the other four all costing a dollar. Now I did the math, and taking the base game's price of two, and multiplying it by the number of reviews, which is at which is 479 at the time of making this video and it it adds to 958 dollars given towards the base game alone if we add the 43 reviews on the dlc with the price of one dollar and add it 958 plus 43 that is a thousand and one dollars taking just the people who were brave enough to leave reviews a thousand dollars The main gameplay is somewhat tame, it could maybe be safe for YouTube, but the gallery is where I lose my mind. Oh my God, I can't fucking take it anymore. What the fuck is this? At minimum, this is a negative 10 out of 10 game that fully deserves to be listed as a psychological horror. 100 out of 10 on that matter. It's, it's kind of funny, actually. The people who left that psychological horror steam tag knew exactly what they were doing it was a warning this whole video this whole time they were trying to warn me and i didn't listen so what did i learn throughout my adventure throughout the psychological horror section on the steam page hmm i would say on the psychological horror section you could find good games such as doki doki literature club or lily's well or maybe some funny games like bad guys at school and ape war Sometimes you'll find god-awful games such as Love Love Joe Biden or Furry Feet. Another thing I've learned is that sometimes a bad game can be a good game because of friends or how goofy it is. And lastly, I realize that maybe I have the wrong career.
Hi, Lois. Can I be the actual? Yeah. <laughs>